90 to 95% of people walking on this earth are not fulfilled in what they're doing. They are not joyful in what they're doing. A low number. Oh, I know. You know, it's, it, I kind of rounded it down so it sounded a little bit cooler because I like the number five, you know? But think about that. Like, if, you, if there's a few billion people on this planet, why is one, like, three to five out of every hundred I meet fulfilled? And it doesn't matter about if they're a multi-billionaire or if they have $10 in their pocket because I've been, on both, been with both people and seen fundamental different things. And so my entire mission that was kind of like my Elon Musk moment was what if I could flip that number upside down? What would it take to be able to do that? To get to a place where people were walking around and they were fulfilled. And I refer to that as enthusiasm, which if we go to the root word of enthusiasm, it's enthos, which means possessed by God. If we want to go even deeper than that, possessed by unconditional love. How much different would people be with parenting, teaching, doctors, lawyers, everybody, if they were truly aligned with a mission that served what they wanted to do in life? That's what I'm working on. What's up, everybody? It is the Sales Wolf Podcast. This is episode 42. I am Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And Sylvania Harad. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! Uh, yes. Waited my entire life to do that. That is yes. the, that is the <laughs> first yeah. remote howl. That's the first remote, remote howl, yeah. And I like it. It felt good. It felt right. Felt right. It felt right. <laughs> <laughs> so this is episode 42. And obviously, as you guys uh, could tell immediately, we've got a special guest on. And um, and we want to give him an opportunity to kind of tell his story. Um, talk about some of the things that he's working on. We uh, just connected recently, uh, but extremely like-minded. And I've just been intrigued by all the stuff he's got going on. Um, one of the things that I am intrigued by lately is finding people that are doing what they're passionate about. Um, and I just think that there's something magical that happens when people are actually working out of their convergence. Yep. When it um, goes from your head to your heart, mm -hmm. it's a yep. it's a power. It's a it's something magic. I call it magic too. It yeah. is it's magical. So. Yeah, and that's something that immediately uh, when I was talking to Sylvania, I could instantly tell is what he was working on right this second was what he was supposed to be uh, working on and what he was supposed to be doing. So uh, we've got a lot of different things that we're going to probably talk about here in the future uh, with him. Um, but wanted just to give you an opportunity uh, to just tell everybody who you are, uh, kind of where you're from, your story, and you can go as far back as you want <laughs> <laughs> or you can stay as current as you want, uh, but just give yeah, you kind of an open awesome. floor, man. So thank you. Um, thanks for everybody that's going ahead and listen to this podcast. Name is Sylvania Harad, and I will be the brightest person you'll listen to today um, because my name is spelled just like the light bulb. And cool, <laughs> cool fact, like my wife actually went and bought Christmas lights that were Sylvania Christmas lights. So that was the best Christmas present she could ever give me because I got my own branded Christmas lights. The best part about that, though, is because I saw that picture on Facebook is like their whole motto or the whole like tagline was stay lit. Which is not like, <laughs> I know, right? They better stay lit. <laughs> I know that's the, whole, that's the whole point. I don't want to plug it in and everything that will work. But um, <laughs> when it comes down to it, I'm just a lover of people. I mean, since I was a little kid, my mom used to crack me up because she told me she would try to sneak out the house in the early morning just to kind of get away. And then she thought one morning she's finally gonna gonna be out of the house before I was there. And she begins to like walk down the stairs. And she's like, I got him. And before she knows it, she gets ready to turn around the corner. And there I am sitting there at the front door waiting for her to come. Because okay. I just loved being in places where there were going to be people at, different crowds doing that. And so since growing up, I was always inquisitive. Um, I was the one who got in trouble for taking apart the remote to see how it worked. Um, I would take apart the lawnmower. I would take apart the TV. I would take apart all kinds of things because at my heart to heart, I'm actually an engineer. I like to learn how things are constructed at its basis form. And then once I know the fundamentals, 
then you can input little things here and there to help either that situation or people. So after growing up, I knew that I was going to be independent and I didn't want my family to pay for college or do anything like that. So I joined the United States Army and unbeknownst to me, I thought I was joining and going to go do computers. But sometimes I find that life has a different plan than what you think of. So I got there and went to school and realized while I was there, we were over strength. So they gave me an opportunity to reclassify. And after reclassifying, I, be, I went and reclassified to become mental health. And so it was amazing how that process worked because if you look at it, I find that most people have like these little defining moments and it happens in like different cycles. And so that defining moment for me put me in a frame where I was sitting down doing what I'd already been doing pretty much my entire life up, up to that moment. And I got the opportunity to go be a mental health counselor and work with some of the, the, the best experts in the world, which we refer to as the, the special operations community or the soft community. And so when you're there, you realize that it, in movies, you look at the, the special operators and there are these big muscle bound dudes that are going ahead and doing stuff. That's TV. In real life, a lot of those guys that I got the opportunity to meet and train with and coach were, were you, you wouldn't be able to put them on a police lineup. But the difference was they had a fundamentally different mindset than other people. And there was a perspective about them where they were, they were looking at how they were learning, not what they were doing wrong. And they, they would be focused on this process of excellence. And it was an amazing experience because I worked with those guys, but I also worked with conventional forces. And from there, I got the opportunity to, to just really witness and see what excellence looked like. Because up until that moment, um, I was listening to Kevin Hart's audiobook the other day, and he was talking about he always went ahead and, and shot for average, you know? And it was like, I don't want to work too hard. I don't want to do that. But then what he began to realize is that being average is actually a lot harder than being amazing. Mm -hmm. And so... That is it, interesting. Yeah, like it's actually harder to, to go, go through life and be mediocre because you have to like like you have to train that to go there and sit and like rather than go to the gym like sit on the couch and, and eat donuts you know it's much harder to do that because you feel bad then you're doing more stuff to help you that has you feel bad rather than being in a place of vitality so that was the first time I got that experience and so after I got hurt um in in the military and got medically retired so I was forced to get in a situation where it was like I have all this experience but in the civilian world, it didn't translate to anything because I did not go to college first. So they said, great, I know you have all this experience, but you're only going to be able to do intakes. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, and we're going to pay you $9 an hour. I'm like, holy crap. I got to figure out something because I had my son. I was there with my wife at that time. And I said, I got to figure out something to pay our bills because our bills are not going to get paid for $9 an hour. And so I was standing in a, in a Walmart one time. And a guy comes up wearing a Dallas Cowboys hat. And I'm a Philadelphia Eagles fan. And so naturally, we didn't like each other. But he goes and he, and, he, and he was like, that's a pretty ugly hat you got on. And I was like, yeah, it pretty much matches your face. And that's how we started a conversation. So we're standing there in line at Walmart. And, I, and we start talking to be able to do things. Come to find out, he ran a, um, an independent insurance agency. And I was looking for a job. And at the time it was going to be, I was either going to be selling credit card processing, you know, because if you don't know anything else, it's like, here's what's going on. I was going to be working at the local Starbucks, um, working at a McDonald's, like finding all kinds of odd end jobs to be able to support my family. And that gentleman was there. And I'm a firm believer that I don't believe in coincidences. I believe that if you begin to think about something and take action towards that, the opportunities will present itself when you're ready to take action. So as I was, as I was doing that, um, I started selling insurance and unbeknownst to me, that product really wasn't really good, but it, it taught me something as I began doing that is the more you begin to serve people and give them what they want while serving what they need, the more impact you can create. Sure. And so that process led me to going to where I started. I got into IT and I've been, I've been an uh, IT software executive for the last 10 years or so. 
But if we look at it, all those breadcrumbs from me going ahead and going in and starting in, in the army doing IT, which I went to in high school, I did IT as well, to learn understanding how to go ahead and, and communicate with people. Because if you think about it, sales and mental health is exactly the same. Like a person has a problem, they're looking for a resolution, and you're creating a process that helps them get to that resolution that they're hoping to get to. And then it led me through all this different journey of connecting with people and being there to now the point I'm here um, doing high level software sales. But that has led me to something else that Tyler and I were talking about. And just like you mentioned before, I'm a big person who lives here, not up here. Because the one thing about being in IT is that a lot of people live in this space because you're always analyzing and calculating and trying to figure out and, and want to make the most rational choice. But still at that time, un, un, unconscious to us, we're still emotional beings for some people. Those that are aware completely understand we're emotional creatures and want to do those things. And about six months ago, I was sitting down and I was reading Elon Musk's autobiography. And that's what really led me to what I'm working on now, which he has gone ahead and made billions of dollars doing stuff that people thought was impossible. And it's not about the billions of dollars, but it's more of the mission that he's creating for his life because for him, he wants to colonize planets. So if you think about it from creating a currency platform to going ahead and creating a solar platform to creating vehicles that run on there and creating a rocket ship company that can take rockets and come right back, everything leads him towards that mission of what he wants to do because he's dreamed about it. And he's like, what? it's much easier to go train for something magnificent than it is to drink for something that's not. So he's, he's created a process where everybody looked at him and said, you're crazy, why are you doing this? And in, in the famous words of the esteemed scholar, Bruno Mars, don't believe me, just watch. <laughs> and as he's doing that, it's, 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 it's phenomenal. And that led me to, I was walking around and noticing, especially from my mental health background, that 90 to 95% of people walking on this earth are not fulfilled in what they're doing. They are not joyful in what they're doing. A low number. Oh, I know. You know, it's, it, I kind of rounded it down so it sounded a little bit cooler because I like the number five, you know? But think about that. Like, if, you, if there's a few billion people on this planet, why is one, like, three to five out of every hundred I meet fulfilled? And it doesn't matter about if they're a multi-billionaire or if they have $10 in their pocket, because I've been on both, been with both people and seen fundamental different things. And so my entire mission that was kind of like my Elon Musk moment was what if I could flip that number upside down? What would it take to be able to do that? To get to a place where people were walking around and they were fulfilled. And I refer to that as enthusiasm, which if we go to the root word of enthusiasm, it's enthos, which means possessed by God. If we want to go even deeper than that, possessed by unconditional love. How much different would people be with parenting, teaching, doctors, lawyers, everybody, if they were truly aligned with a mission that served what they wanted to do in life? So that's what I'm working on. So his, th his whole thesis just went from Kevin Hart to Elon Musk. Yeah. And then he wrapped it up with Bruno Mars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I got smarter. And I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love uh, it. That was awesome. Um, um, is that the first time you've ever told that story? <laughs> um, in this format, yes. <laughs> well, it was Possessed uh, by love. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm no, you need that. <laughs> you need <laughs> to be with, like, sincere concern. Like, 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 you need to talk with him more. <laughs> I plan on it. <laughs> hey, so one Every question. day I come into the office and Tyler doesn't like to be hugged, so that's the first thing I do is hug him. <laughs> Yeah. Just, 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 just keep hugging on him. Yeah. That's you know, what I do. I That's what I do. I just keep hugging him. It's the, it's the literal <laughs> version of what is it? Tony Robbins hugging the cactus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just every morning. It's, it's my penance. I've got to hug it's, the cactus. It's actually the whole. It's actually the entire reason I work in Georgia three fourths of the time. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I, I had a question for you. So when you talked, yeah. going, kind of going back to the uh, the mental health uh, uh -huh. in the military, you mentioned that you worked. Um, 
for a period of time specifically with special forces. And then you mentioned um, there was a period of time, and I don't know if it was throughout, but that you were also working with conventional um, yes. uh, officers. Um, mm -hmm. Was there a distinct difference that you saw in the things that you were uh, working on them with, or were there distinct characteristics that you saw that were different in between those two? Um, similar, but different. So like with conventional forces, the people that we were working with in training, there, they were trying to find ways. So like on, on the conventional side, um, those guys, when I was working with them, it was like little things, um, kind of like we refer to them as personality disorders. So it was the guy who was pissed off at his, at his company officer because he had been deployed four or five times and he just, just didn't want to be there. Um, to like them and it, it was like different like that was an extreme but most of the times the people that came in were just got into the military they probably had some different types of issues before they got in and now it was just kind of like course correcting and being there whereas on the on the other side you would see people who like they had real world trauma that they were that they were dealing with and trying to be able to to understand the differences of humanity. So like where it was, you're talking to a, to a special operator who like, I remember one guy in specific, he had been in every major conflict since, since Beirut. Wow. And yeah. And he, so he, he, he had been in for at this, at this time might've been like 23 years or something like that. And he was, he, he can tell me about Mogadishu. He could tell me about all these different exercises that they were doing. And his biggest thing that he was going through was that I, I don't, I don't know how to turn this off because he never learned how to connect with people. And he was getting ready to retire. And he's like, what do I do? Because I've always lived kind of this high speed, high life, high adrenaline type of life. And now that I'm not going to be in charge and, and running a group that does this stuff every day long, like, what am I going to do? So on that spectrum, compared to the, the conventional forces guy who is like earlier in his career and is like, um, I don't know if this is going to be a good fit for me. I look at it kind of like entrepreneurs, like when entrepreneurs are getting to a point where they're moving towards legacy and what they want to do afterwards, or somebody just getting started in the entrepreneur world and the struggles they're going to go through. That's interesting. So, so basically with the conventional, it was the adjustment to getting in. And then with the special forces, it was the adjustment to what they just went through and the adjustment to getting out, which yeah. is extremely interesting. Very different. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like if there was a process of what you were doing for those that were adjusting now to getting out when they went in, that there would be, that it could alleviate some of that issue later on? It, it does. I would say. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, I, combat changes everything. I mean, that, that's, that's, yeah. that's the, the variable that you can't account for, I guess. But. But more than anything else, if I had to wrap it around one thing, I would say this is not even specific directly to the military. It's to what I've noticed for those that are even um, not fulfilled is lack of vision. And what I mean by, what I mean by vision is, is, is kind of not like, hey, I want to go lose 30 pounds in the next six months. I mean, it's that one thing that, that you want to bank your life on. And that's the thing that you, that you want to be about. So I was talking to a lady yesterday um, whose whole mission is about wellness. It doesn't matter if it's health, if it's financial, if it's emotional, like wellness is what she's, what she's about because that's her entire life. That's the thing that consumes her. That's the thing that when she wakes up in the middle of the night and thinking about stuff and wants to write stuff down, it's all about wellness. So when she interacts with people, whether it's a course that she's teaching about relationships, whether it's about financial wellness, all those things is what consumes her. And so like for that, for that individual who had definitive purpose, all, if, if he just wanted to create a life of purpose and serving people, you know, he can do that exact same thing by going ahead and, and running a boys and girls club and where he's able to do that at a very effectively, he can create a consulting firm where he goes ahead and he teaches companies leadership, kind of like Jocko and those guys have done at Echelon Front. He can take that and he can maybe become a contractor and, and, and come on the contractor side. He may go work for the federal government and be part of the HRT teams. There's lots of options he has when he has definitive purpose of what he wants to do and has a vision of this is what I choose to occur for myself. Same as the person getting started. 
because where I notice it's, I, I think of it kind of like running a mile. The toughest lap in running a mile is the third one because like the first one, you're like, oh man, I'm moving pretty good. The second one, you're like, hold up, did I go a little bit too fast? The third one, you're like, I'm going to die. <laughs> and the fourth one, you're like, yes, it's almost done. So when that person's in that third lap and they're going around, that's when vision is very key. Because if you know I'm doing this because I'm running for charity or whatever it is, and think about all those lives, those people that are not going to be able to do that, you find this extra oomph to, to pick it up a little bit. So that's what I would say. That's awesome. So what did that process look like for you? So when you had that kind of defining moment when you were reading the book uh, about Elon yeah. Musk and what was that process like of kind of developing what your mission was long term or your vision was long term? And mm -hmm. then did you go through a process of breaking that down into here's the steps ultimately to get there? Absolutely. So what what I, I naturally like to go to is I, I learned this from Matthew McConaughey and listening to him at his speech that he did where he said he's chasing the guy 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. And so I go a little bit further. So I think about when I'm, when I'm 80 and if I was 80 and anything in the world could, could possibly happen, like anything, I go ahead and I say like, what would I be doing? Who would I be serving? And what kind of lifestyle would I have lived? And so I think a lot of people miss the third part because they don't think about lifestyle because lifestyle is the key is to me is the most important thing. But I sat down and I said, all right, what, what would I be doing? And so it was like, I love nothing more than that feeling of liberation, right? It's when you're sitting there and you have a challenge and you literally like, I know I'm going to figure this out. I know I'm going to figure this out. And I believe the reason why people are so important is because people are mirrors. And so certain relationships or certain conversations you can have can just spark something that has been dormant for you for a long period of time and you're waiting for it to occur. So how it works for me is I went ahead and I said, all right, 80, all right, what would I be doing? I'm like, oh man, like I'm just traveling around the world, impacting, building leaders, having conversations. Like every day, all I'm doing is talking about people around fulfillment and vision and accomplishing that. So I said, who would I be serving? And that's where I, I got back and I said, who, who is who I am? You know, who are the people I want to hang out with every day? And what is, what does that look like? Because it's no fun if you're hanging around people that are boring. Like, mm. like I'm thinking about that kind brings of me to a point, Tyler, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, who wants, like, if you guys have never oh, watched well, that, like, <laughs> like think, think about like, I, I don't know if this is real or not, but like, like, um, the, the guys at Ranger up or the guys that are, that are like Matt best and black rifle coffee company. Like if you mm. just watch their videos, I sit there and I'm like, I wonder what it'd be like just to sit around with all your buddies and you're just creating stuff. Right. That's what we do. <laughs> you know, it's like, like how cool, like, and it's, it, and it's family. So you're not going to like each other every day, you know, that's fine. But for the long perspective, like, you know, you're going to enjoy like their company 80% of the time when you're the 20% of the time where you're not trying to kill them. And so, I'm thinking about that and, and like in oh, that kind of impact. Huh? That sounds a lot like marriage. <laughs> Absolutely. It is a marriage, you know? <laughs> You're like, oh, okay. I'm just going to, that's why we have guest bedrooms and make sure your guest bedroom is always very comfortable. What, what uh, did, yeah, I, I know. Um, the, uh, what did Chris Rock say? He said, uh, he said about relationships, he said, if you've never thought of rolling your wife's dead body up on a carpet and dumping it, <laughs> you ain't been in love. <laughs> you guys don't know each other yet. You, you, just don't, don't, you just don't know each other yet, yeah. Absolutely. Like, there's, there's, there's moments, like, like, you're sitting there, you're like, hold up. Did, that ch did you just fart that? I think. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were talking about that Chris Rock when he said, I would never, ever hit a woman. But, but I, I shake shit. this shit out of here. <laughs> so you're going to sit down, you're going to eat your food, you're going to have a good time. You're going to have a good time. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's funny uh, you know, right there. It's, it's there so Which is not okay. Bring back. For most people, don't, you don't even have to go to 80, just go to three. Mm. Go to three, like three to five years is the longest, uh, the shortest period of time of like, like short term memory that you can do that the brain actually gets excited about. So I naturally go to three years and I say, all right, if in 
in 60 or a year, 50 years, something like that, I'm going to be here. I break it down to three. So in three years, what can I do to ensure that I'm going to get to where I want to be in 20? And then, so that 50 years, but you can go like 20, because really all you're doing, you're probably not going to do those things, but you're training your brain to think about that far in the future. Yep. And when I, when I go ahead and I go, okay, 20 years, like let's say we have about seven offices around the world and I have these different trainers that are going off the route. We're making things happen. We have more regional based as far as the, for, for like global enthusiasm where people can come in. I think of it kind of like, here's my obligatory CrossFit statement. Um, you're going to hear me mention CrossFit. I am a CrossFitter. So yes, I am the Jehovah's Witness of fitness. Are you also and vegan? Are you, I talk about CrossFit. Or paleo. Or No, I don't go paleo, okay. man. I, I go like donut -o, So <laughs> <laughs> I like donuts and Oreos. Don't ask me about paleo. That's funny. Um, <clears throat> but when it comes to those things, more importantly, the three years, you want your whatever you're doing today to move you closer to where you want to be in three years. Yep. Because what I found is that the more focus and intention you have about what you're doing every day, and the one thing you need to accomplish that day, you're guaranteed that you're going to hit your mark in three years, yep. at least 80% of the list that you have there. And so when you have that, you know, when you see a new Bitcoin thing come up or, <laughs> or this new business opportunity or these different opportunities are going to be asked, you can sit back and ask yourself, does this move me closer to the vision I have for my life? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, don't do it. If it does run it as fast as you possibly can, because yeah that allows you to always have definitive purpose in what you're doing. Very good. So seeing that as this is the Sales Wolves podcast, we always yeah. like to ask our guests, because we've gotten varying definitions, but what would be your definition of what a sales wolf is? A sales wolf is a person that can be an excellent alpha, but also loves the fact that sometimes they're going to be an omega. Hmm. I like that. Because if we think about it, like I a lot of see a lot of people like going to go ahead and pound their chest and be like, I'm the man. But you know how much more power it takes to step aside in certain situations to be an omega? Mm -hmm. And how you're how the omega is naturally treated is based upon how they treated other people when they were the alpha. That's right. <laughs> That's awesome. That has to do with what we talk about all the time. You can't feed your ego and your family at the same time. That's right. <laughs> yep. I'm taking that note. I'm like, hold up. That's going in the notes. And I've had to tell Tyler, because Tyler's an alpha, period. And <laughs> one of the things that. early on, um, and he's such a competitor in our organization, that he literally... It was okay if other people did well as long as he did better. <laughs> but, <laughs> right? And I, I literally, over the last, I mean, how many times have I told you uh, it's, yeah. it's better to be rich than, than right? right. <laughs> better to be rich than right. Because you don't have to force your opinion on other people or, for, or, or beat them. You can actually join them and, and get a whole lot more accomplished. And, uh, and so anyway. Which is a difficult process when you go, especially when you start, when I went into training and, yep. and leading and managing and, and it was this dynamic that was just stuck in my brain of like, I love you, I want to teach you everything, but I'm going to destroy you simultaneously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, true. But I'm going to give you everything. And I'm going to beat but you. But I'm still going to beat you, and I'm going to feel so much better that you were given it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that you had the recipe, the same recipe, and it Leveling still tasted it. better. You know, it's, it's like, here's what I'm going to do. Like, it's no fun beating you this bad, so I'm going to teach you all my different secrets. But therefore, I make my competition, like, that much more fun. No, I get Exactly. <laughs> That's fun. Exactly. Man. That's fun. So tell us, um, kind of as we close here, um, what is it that you're specifically working on right now that there may be something that some people can plug into? And then certainly we want to make sure that you can plug in anywhere where people can find you uh, online, all that good stuff. So right now, um, at, at least, least for, for the next 39 days, I am completely focused on ensuring, ensuring that, that every person, every person I come in contact, contact with can make 2018 the best year they ever made possible. possible. 
So, so what I found, what I from found people, when it comes to, when it comes like to, when we get down to, like to, the, get down to, the, micro, to the, to the micro, what happens is, what happens is without focus, without focus, actually, you're not going to get to where you want to be in three years. And so, especially when it's so, especially when a world relation that's going on, stimulation that's going on, it makes it very challenging. It makes it very challenging not to be distracted, to not be distracted. And so, what I went ahead and did was, what I went ahead and did was, I look at when you're, when you're a leader, the king wolf happens to be there. And you're the king I go out and I find situations. I go out and I find situations that make because it I look at. I'm going to go out. I'm willing to go ahead. I'm going to go out. Like I'm willing to go ahead and like and find out take exactly. Bullets, do that. Kind what's going to be find out exactly? What's going to so be what I did was I, I scoured the earth and I. And so what I, I did was I scoured the earth different and I looked at all the different programs, different tools, every line be there, and that's when I found Gary Ryan. Ever get the opportunity to meet Gary, you'll know that. I don't if think there's ever get the opportunity to meet Gary. You don't know that. About. I don't think there's a word uh, he says. Everything that he does is about. completely and utterly uh, intentional. Everything that he does is, is completely and utterly intentional. Very similar to mine. His version is giving people the tools the same necessary. Is very similar to, to access the lives they deserve. Giving people the tools necessary to access the lives they deserve. He spends hours and weeks and months figuring out whatever those tools are to be able to be there. He spends hours and weeks and months figuring out whatever those tools are to be able to be there. And that's why a few years ago, you set a goal that you want to accomplish in 2019. And so the 108 challenge. Challenges. You but set yet, a goal he's going to give you the focus and intention and accountability to do it in 100 But yet, he's going to give you the so focus and intention for and anybody that says, you know what, next year I want to make more more money so than I did last year. For anybody that says, you know what, next year, year I want to make more more money than that, I did last year. Twenty nineteen, you want to get twenty eight bytes last year. January first, twenty nineteen, that you know that be in a different twenty nineteen. You want to come twenty eight by January first, twenty nineteen, with him. You want to be in a different point in every world coming into this year. About the challenge. Um, right now, I'm part of January him, 1, and we're and going so out that's, and that's everywhere we're doing for the next 39 days is talking about, about that, giving people it starts to January that. 1, and really and getting so that's, getting that's what I'm doing for the next 39 days is talking about that, giving people access to that, and really getting, in, getting inside of a system that helps them be successful. That's awesome. That is awesome. And it, it goes hand in hand with what we talk about a lot, uh, which is the majority of people underestimate what they can accomplish in say 12 months, but they mm. overestimate what they can co accomplish in one. Right. Um, but you're exactly right. It's by identifying those practices that are yeah. daily yep. that force you um, into um, good habits, force you into those action items that you need to accomplish every single day to get to where you're going uh, so that they, they can make those weeks more impactful. And I truly, I 100% believe if you were to go all in in 100 days that you could accomplish more than the average person does in an entire year. Absolutely, yeah. So we yeah, do that, we do that, we do that every 100 days around here. We, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, Tyler, let's go back to the week where you said you were going to do what most people do in a year. You were going to do in that week, mm -hmm. right? Yep. What was the difference between what you were able to accomplish in that week compared to what most people do in a year? Just insane focus and time, time in. Yeah. So was that it? so the hours spread out were probably. <laughs> probably equal um, yeah. as far as actual work time as far as actual like sitting across from another human being and and mm -hmm. selling uh, we're probably <laughs> not it's probably about the same as what people do, <laughs> do in a year, year. yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but the intense focus uh, on the goal um, yep. I think that's probably what it is yeah absolutely so and I believe that everybody has that ability they just don't have a community where they could be supported to take that type of action because Absolutely. without community we're dead so where can people find you online or where can people so, find out more about the 100 day challenge as well so right now um we're running a, a facebook group called achieve goals fast um where we're we're going ahead and getting people ramped up and, and warmed up so instead of doing 100 days we're doing like 14 day challenges back to back leading up to the new year um I'm the only Sylvania Harad you'll find on the internet. So um, I have an exclusive rights agreement with Google. Um, they like like the guys, Sergey and, and called me a couple days ago, said, guess what? You're the only Sylvania Harad on there. So if you go in there, if you find the one with the police report, that wasn't me. I had nothing to do with that. But more importantly, it's Sylvania Harad. You can find me on all social media channels. It's, it's Sylvania like the light bulb. 
um, and last name like Harrods of London. So you just type in Sylvania Harad, you can find me on any of those platforms. Anybody that's looking to do more, literally reach out to me. Um, I love nothing more than when people actually reach out and have the gumption to say, look, here's where I'm at in my life, here's where I wanna go, do you have 30 minutes? Because as Tony Robbins always says, if you don't have 30 minutes, you don't have a life. So I always intentionally pencil in an hour a day to connect with people that I haven't talked to before. And the funny part is, is that because it's been there on my calendar, people always reach out. So go ahead, grab that hour and we can help map out a plan for you as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. Man, I appreciate you being on the podcast and uh, and being our first remote guest. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. This is actually I like really, this. really good. I like it a lot. Thank you, uh, Steven Spielberg, for setting it up over there. <laughs> That's what we call Jason in here. We call him Steven Spielberg. <laughs> on the ones and twos in the back. Yep. <laughs> but man, we appreciate you. Um, guys, this was episode 42 of the Sales Wolves podcast with an awesome guest here that you guys will be seeing a lot more of. And... Uh, <laughs> As always, I am Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. Sylvania Harad. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow. Ow.